Hey, everybody. Thanks for listening to Raw Knuckles Podcast. Please like, follow, and subscribe. And my dad, uh, basketball player, he was he played high school basketball. He was never... <laughs> Oh, he's never, uh, no, really? he's never that nothing good. Lo- yeah, that was his highest level. <laughs> he didn't play awesome. for the Celtics? That's, that's no, awesome. no. He was never, uh, he was never the going anywhere. The leading that, scorer in gym class? When I stepped on the ice, I never backed down, and I never stayed down. And I was vicious, and I was malicious, and I don't care. <laughs> Freaking madman! Look at him going to town! Anyway, welcome uh, to the Raw Knuckles podcast. Uh, we appreciate it, Tim and I, that you took the time to join us. I know you were going the draft. Um, so you're down at the NHL draft, and you've never really been to a draft before because your draft was um, done remotely. Um, drafted in the first round, 16th overall. What? Um, what was that feeling like? Are you sitting there in front of a computer to find out if you're drafted instead of being at the draft? Yeah, it was it was weird. Um, it was it was kind of bittersweet. Like obviously, you want to be at the draft and uh, kind of experience that, but at the same time, I got to have like thirty friends and family at my house and um, sitting in front of the TV with me, kind of going through it, going through it with me, and uh, probably wouldn't have had that at a normal draft. Probably would have only had five to ten actually people been able to, to get there and go sit down so um it's kind of special uh, in its own way that i had to get so many friends and family um at my place and um be able to watch out with me so so drafted by the halves in the 16th round growing up in edmonton right sherwood park um we uh, an oilers fan or a Habs fan uh Honestly, a little bit of an Oilers fan, and um, <laughs> I mean, Habs are always there. I always liked the the Canadian teams. Um, I was always rooting for them, but Oilers were were definitely uh, one of my favorite teams growing up, but not anymore. So, <laughs> <laughs> who were some of your favorite players growing up on the uh, besides uh, I mean Wayne? Yeah, no, I I always enjoyed watching uh, Ryan and Hopkins um, when he got drafted in the league, and um, they had that that kid lying on there and. Uh, He's a Western League guy too, so I um, always liked watching him, and he had a really good year last year, and he's just a solid two-way guy, and um, he's got a good shot, and um, just always always fun to watch him, and um, seems like a really good guy, I don't know, but seems like a really good person, and I've heard, heard good things, so um, yeah, probably probably me, just definitely one of the guys I, I always liked to watch growing up. So uh, you're born into a family of athletes, your mom was a figure skater, Father was a basketball player. Your brother plays pro hockey, drafted by, was it Buffalo, your brother? Yeah, it's Jeff. Older Buffalo, brother. Yeah. Um, so w- how did you get introduced to hockey where dad's a basketball player, mom uh, was a figure skater, and like how did they get you involved in the hockey? Was that something they kind of pushed you toward or they let you make up your mind on what you wanted to do as far as sports? Um, well, they kind of just let me make up, make up my mind. I, I don't think my mom really wanted us to play hockey too much. She was a little bit rough. Um, she was always kind of kind of worried. And um, my brother didn't start playing hockey until uh, he was about seven or eight, and he, he started out as a goalie. Um, we were five years apart, so um, being the younger younger sibling, just always wanted to do whatever the older brother was doing, and um, decided to give hockey a try when I was about three or four, and um, or tried skating when I was about three or four, and I loved it right away and um, just kind of ran with it. So, and my dad, uh, basketball player, I, he was he played high school basketball. He was never, oh, <laughs> he was God. never, uh, no, really? he was never like, nothing good. Lo- <laughs> yeah, that was his highest level. He didn't that's play awesome. for the Celtics. That's, that's no, awesome. no, he was <laughs> never, like, uh, he was never going leading, anywhere. With the that, leading scorer in gym class. Yeah, that's no. Great. Like it. But I, I, I played with him a couple times, and he likes to throw the elbows out. He's definitely an old style basketball player. So. <laughs> Yeah. Well, um, so, so the hockey, when you, when you started skating the first time, did your mom put you on figure skates or hockey skates? No, I was hockey skates right away. And, um, I, I started going on the ice. I, I grew up in Grand Prairie until I was about 10 years old, Grand Prairie, Alberta. And, um, went on the ice with Tina Karen, her name was. And, uh, so I just hopped on and had those little, little 
trolley thing or whatever you want to call it and just ripped around and ran with it from there and loved it right, right since that day so did your mom teach you at all because i know jeff skinner like he learned how to figure he, he figure skated when he started he's one of, he's a really good skater. yeah did your- no it was it was not really i mean she she kind of just let the the people that, that we were playing do it i guess and um but she was always there their parents my parents were always there watching and, and supporting and um but yeah it was mostly uh the power skating that that were out between there with you, me. between you and your dad's games yeah <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> exactly so, Caden, your junior career, obviously, Prince Albert Raiders, but um, playing for the national team under 17, <clears throat> then the World Juniors who played in 2019, 2021. Uh, 2019, um, the U.S. ends up winning that medal. And then, uh, you know, your last year of eligibility, how difficult was that? You, you played two games, the pandemic comes, it gets canceled. And you don't have that opportunity to go back because when they rescheduled the tournament, you were injured. It was in the summertime. How difficult was that for you? And how did you get through that? Yeah, it was tough. Um, I mean, the first year it was it was fun, and obviously it's such an honor to play in that tournament and play for your country. And there was no fans, which which obviously is was tough. And um, part of that tournament is the the fans playing in Canada and the the atmosphere is. It's unbelievable as you saw in Halifax last year. Did such a good job with that. And, um, so when we got to the the second year, it, it was pretty exciting. Everyone was excited to get fans back in the building and get that atmosphere back and that World Junior feeling back. And um, then about I think it was maybe two or three days two or three days before the um, pre tournament game, they said there's going to be fifty capacity fifty capacity, which um, Kind of sucked but we were still okay with that and at least we had some fans and then played two games and it was canceled so it was tough um but i mean at that time it was it was what they had to do and that's the state the world was in at that time so um obviously it's a little bit frustrating but um something that had to happen and um got to uh go back to junior and then start things up with uh, the oil king which which was uh just fun i just got traded recently so um yeah, but it was tough, obviously, uh, having to see that get counted. So. It's funny how that happens in junior. You start your first year junior, were what, 16 years old? Yeah, yeah. It's incredible. And you end up playing Prince of Albert uh, for most of your career. How difficult is that? You know, you're playing with Prince Albert. You're there your whole career. You love your surroundings. And then, uh, and a lot of kids go through it. They get, end up getting traded um in their last year and they end up going somewhere else but for you that uh turned out pretty well didn't it yeah no it was it was obviously different um pa was my second home really and um it was a blast to, to play there and win a championship there my first year and um you got i don't know if you guys ever been to prince albert saskatchewan but it's a it's a small town and um all they got there is the raiders and um it's a small little rink that's been there for I don't even know how many years, 3,400 capacity. And um, so it was fun to kind of bring, like, bring the, the love back for the Raiders to that town with, with that championship and um, playing there for four years was a blast. And then um, obviously the final run with Edmonton and winning the championship there was obviously so special. And um, grew up watching Oil Kings too as a kid. So um, it was pretty special to be able to, to be able to join those guys for that run and do that. So. Is there a lot of guys, what guys growing up came out of like uh, was Sherwood Park? I mean, I played yeah. with one guy, Benny Andres, Ben Andres, yeah. he was my okay. But otherwise, what guy, what other guy, was there other players that came out of there that you um, looked up to? The biggest, well, I mean, the biggest guy I can, I didn't really look up to him, but the biggest guy I can think of is Cam Ward came out of there. Um, he's, he's from Sherwood Park and he played for the Sherwood Park Kings. Um, Sam Steele, he's, he, uh, he came out of there. Um those are the two guys I can think of right now. I'm sure there's a couple more, but um, yeah, no, those are the two guys I could think of right now. And then obviously my, my brother, and, um, he's, he's done now though, retired, going to school and stuff. So um, yeah, your brother played a, a bit in Buffalo and then uh, with the Rochester Americans in American League. And then did he, did he go to Europe for a year? Did yeah, he? he went He went to Europe uh, this past year. He was there from October to uh 
over to around maybe December, and then he, he decided to, to retire and have work. He had a couple couple uh, concussions and um, just ready to move on and wanted to do something new with, with his life. And um, so he's going to school now at the University of Alberta and um, trying a different path. So happy for him. I think uh, life after hockey, there's lots to do with life after, after hockey. So. Were you guys similar players? Um, I'd say he's a little bit more offensive. Uh, maybe a little bit. He's a better skater than me for sure. He, he could skate. He's, uh, he's an athlete. He... Uh, he could have, he could have been a track track and field athlete. I think he he's got uh, really good uh, really good genetics, and um, you know he he's uh, he's definitely a little bit better skater than I was. So, uh, so yeah, he's a little so, bit more offensive. Yeah. So you had that draft, and you drafted 16th by the Habs. Um, the anticipation for you coming to an organization like the Canadians with all that tradition, all the glory of the past. What was like? What was it like for you when you first come here? The nerves, the first training camp. Because, listen, I, I, we played golf together with Nick, and first time I met you, I said hi to you before in the garage at the Bell Center. But boy, you are for a young kid. You be, you mature beyond your years, not only uh, off the ice but on the ice. And where does that confidence come from? And and coming in that Habs camp for the first year, like. What was it like for you? Um, yeah, it was obviously stressful and uh, definitely some starstruck moments that first camp. And um, But I think it was just even um, in junior, uh, getting coached by Mark Habscheid and, uh, you know, he's a little bit of an older style coach and um, he would always preach to me a lot of when you get an opportunity, like you got to run with it and um, do what you can to, to – um, do what you can with that that opportunity, and um, so in, in camp, I just try try my best to just take that opportunity and do what I can with it. And um, you know, I, I tried to not worry about the, the media or, or all that stuff, and just kind of try and stay focused in on, on what I can do and what I can control. And uh, just tried to go in there and work hard and, and be myself. And um, so I think that's the, the biggest thing I can do at those camps. And, um, camp last year, just try to take the opportunity that was there because I knew there was a couple of spots at camp last year and um, just try and run with it. So. so that first training camp, you get there and, um, you know, coming out of junior, it's not always easy to make that adjustment. And we look, you know, for, for years, some of the most difficult positions to adjust to that level in the NHL is center iceman, in defenseman. Uh, you seem like you had that seamless transition, 20, 20 years old, 21 now, and you come in, you're averaging 20 minutes a night. Now, um, what was that? I, I guess that young core certainly helps, but I've watched here for the last 14 years, and I always saw young guys come into this organization as defensemen and they make a mistake, and they got their ass pinned on the bench. And, boy, when you come in here and started playing right away, you started chewing up minutes right away, and um, you seem like you adjusted to the level, no problem. What was it like for you to, to make that move from junior to the pros? Yeah, um, I think, honestly, a lot of it, like you said, I was, I was playing quite a bit, but honestly helped, I think. Um, just in the go out there and play and, and have fun. And um, I mean, that's probably the biggest thing was, was just going out there and playing and have fun. And I think Marty too was, was a huge, um, was a huge part of that. I think he, he told all the young guys, especially the young D it's, it's tough, obviously, like you said, to jump into the NHL and as a young guy, a young defenseman and um, just stress to us that you know, mistake, mistakes going to happen. You're going to, you're going to make wrong reads, but um that's that's the game. That's life, and um, you learn from that. So, um, I think playing quite a bit helped, and Marty was definitely uh, a big, big uh, factor to to all of our all of our um, success for the young guys back there. I think he was he was so good with just letting us play and um, not giving us too much information to kind of um, throw our heads in a loop. And uh, no, he was he was great for for that and just letting us go play and have fun. So. 
Did you know uh, Arbor, Jack guy, before you went to camp? Yeah, I knew him a little bit um, from from the first camp, and then um, we lived together. Uh, last summer, we came early in August, so we lived together for, for a month, so we got to know each other pretty well there. So, yeah, he's, uh, he's uh, <laughs> quite the guy. <laughs> He certainly is a yeah. character. And <laughs> yeah. listen, you guys have a great young core, and and it's awesome to see because listen, like I said, I've been back here for a few years, and you know the team was getting a bit older, and all of a sudden this infusion of talent comes in. Um, you got Jordan Harris, uh, Suzuki, Caulfield, Abba, uh, just a great young core. How exciting is that for you, like moving forward? Um, in, in this draft, and in, in you're at this draft, like, what is it? Is there a group of you guys down there, or are you just going the draft because you you want to watch it and you haven't been to one? Or? Um, well, my my girlfriend's brother uh, is going to get drafted. Um, hopefully Wednesday. Um, that's that's the the hope, obviously. Um, so um, here for here for them, and um, here with their whole family. So um, kind of uh, just hanging out with them and. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's exciting, um, to, to see what we have coming up and, um, obviously a lot of young, young, good players. And, um, I mean, like you said here, this, this draft got a good pick here in this draft. So and that's another, another piece of the future that, that hopefully we can, we can put in there. And, um, but yeah, it's exciting. I think too, like you said, we were golfing just the town when, when the city gets, when the team starts playing well and the city starts to, to buzz and rally around you, it's it's exciting. And I think we saw that in the, the cup run back a couple of years ago and the whole city was rallying around the team. So hopefully get back to that and um, excited for that for sure. So. What position's your girlfriend's brother? You can't be he's running a, like future in-laws, you know? <laughs> <laughs> he's a forward. He's a forward. So he's a, he's a skilled forward. Uh, he played in Prince George this year. Um, he's, a, he's a good player, so... Yeah, like I said, hopefully, hopefully Wednesday. That's the that's the goal. So, but if not, you know, it's not good. So. All right. Well, this season you played forty four games and were buzzing along pretty good, and then all of a sudden the first injury, the knee injury. Um, uh, how I mean, how difficult was it uh, to now? You, you you relied on you're playing a lot of minutes, and then all of a sudden you're out of the lineup. You're out for two months. What was that like watching from above and not being down on the ice? Yeah, well, it's tough. Um, I mean, uh, I've had a past three years. I've had a had a pretty major injury. Um, so, um, I mean, I'm kind of more. It's kind of bad to say, but I'm kind of used to it now, and um, just kind of what I what you have to go through mentally, and um, it's tough having to watch. Uh, but I think it was also good to, to kind of be able to watch from, from the stands and um, just kind of see the game and it looks slower from up there. Um, it's kind of good to see the game and watch it develop, I think. And um, obviously you don't want to be watching from up there, but when you have to be, it's there's definitely things to learn from, from watching up there. And, uh, and it's tough to say too, but I had a lot of guys up there with me and uh, it's not like I was up there alone. So uh, yeah. Yeah. So it was, it was, it was also good to, to kind of have those guys and be up there with those guys and um, didn't make you feel so alone because when you're sometimes you kind of feel like you're you're low, you can be a little bit lonely sometimes. So um, when those guys are up there, it's good to have those guys up there and just kind of shoot the crap with them a little bit and um, watch the game with them. So, so you have that knee injury and then you come back and end up hurting your shoulder and going back out of the lineup now like how frustrating is it? Like you just get back, stop feeling, probably just stop feeling pretty good. And then the shoulder injury. And where are you now in your rehab? Uh, it was my ankle. Um, I, had was a, your ankle? I had a little shoulder thing going on too, but it was my ankle that, that put me out for a while. And um, it's good now. So I back on the ice with uh, the normal group, um, which is good. And um, it's been, it was, it was a long time, obviously. And when it, Cuts into the summer, you never really want, you kind of want your summer to, to be full go and um, full training and um, stuff, but it's tough when it cuts into the summer too, but back uh, back to 100% and um, ready to go. So it's nice to be back on the ice and, and back in the gym fully and uh, excited for the year, ready to, to get to work here. So 
The golf about. game's fine. That does not golf affect game. the golf game. <laughs> no, not affecting the golf game, but the golf game is not where it needs to be right now. So <laughs> me and you both, man. I need like a golf. I need like a swing therapist. Yeah, no, I need oh, to get man. some lessons here. I think I'm at that point where I need to book some lessons. So <laughs> yeah, me too. That's what I said. I was like, I just need a lesson. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you you can hit the ball a mile. I know that. Uh, <laughs> but there's a little more to the game than that, right? Yeah. So, no, exactly. Yeah. There you go. If you love your pet like I love my St. Bernard Adele, you'll want to feed them a balanced, biologically appropriate raw diet. The reason I've chosen Formula Raw is because all blends of their food are locally sourced and they consist of exclusively human-grade meat and organs, as well as fruits and vegetables. And all products used are hormone and antibiotic-free. So like I said, if you love your pet like I love Adele, you'll choose Formula Raw. Make sure you go to FormulaRaw.com and use the promo code RAWNUX at checkout to receive 10% off your first order. That's RAWNUX, R-A-W-K-N-U-X. So playing in Montreal here, moving here from, you know, out west, what was the biggest adjustment for you off the ice? Because you lived away from home, but now you're in the big city. Um, you know, bilingual city, French and English. What, what was, what's the biggest adjustment? Um, I mean, I could say, you could say the French, but I think everyone honestly in, in Montreal is pretty bilingual. I haven't, I haven't found too many, uh, too many problems with that. And everyone's been good and, uh, in that, in that category, but I think just living on your own and, um, you know, becoming, uh, an adult really and um not having a because when you're in junior you have a billet that that's cooking you dinner and uh, putting food on the table for you and um but i think that's probably the biggest adjustment is living on your own um you know kind of um doing normal life stuff and um, real life stuff is is uh definitely kind of tough to adjust to for the first couple months and um uh, but it's good i mean I, I enjoy living on my own and having having my own place and um I mean, I, I can cook a little bit, which is good, and uh, you know the, the normal stuff, chicken and rice, and uh, chicken and rice. all you chicken need. Rice, so yeah. uh, that's Go all you to. need. Yeah. yeah, that's all you need. So, uh, but yeah, it's 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 good, and I think uh, it's good having that young that young core too, and um, those young guys. We all kind of lean each other at lean on each other at times to to kind of help help each other out when we need it. So um, it's definitely helped to have um, a few other young guys to to kind of hang around with and um, do that kind of stuff with. So. Who's your crew outside of the rink besides Arbor, the muscle? Who else is there? <laughs> you got um, to run yeah. with the muscle. He's like, that's great. I just walk around with yeah. Arbor. And, you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Nothing bad's going to happen when you got that big guy walking around with you. Um, uh, Arbor, uh, Slav, um, Kovacevic, um, Pezzi, Harry. Um, those guys are usually uh, the guys were that's the dinner crew on the road and um, I know with those guys a lot, which is good. So um, it's good to have uh, Kobe and Pezzi too. They're kind of the the younger, older guys, I guess you could say. And um, it's kind of they've been a pro for for over a few years now. So um, good to have those guys around and um, great guys too. So how about Rem Pitlick? Like Rem, I met him at the uh, Habs golf tournament, and I could swear when I looked at him, I thought he was like a singer in a boy band. <laughs> Like, honest to God, like, he just seemed like a free spirit, that kid. Yeah, no, he is. Yeah, he's uh, he's an awesome guy. He's, he's quiet, but um, he he's goes about his business, but he's uh, he's an awesome guy. And um, he's super down to earth. If you ever get to sit down and chat with him, he'll chat with you for, for 30 minutes. And, um, no, he's an awesome guy to, to have around. And, um, yeah, like you said, free spirit. He's uh, he's all into that. And, um no, we're gonna awesome have to guy. get him on here, Tim. Yeah, right? yeah, we, yeah, we should, gotta yeah. get Rem on. Yeah, yeah, yeah he'd be good to have on it. Yeah, no, yeah, he's an awesome guy for sure. Yeah. What yeah. about the funniest guy? We got a, Weidman got a few votes. Is he as funny yeah. as everyone's saying? Yeah. Yeah, he's a uh, he's a jokester around the room. Yeah, he's he's a funny guy. Um, I'd give uh, another mention to Sean Monahan too. He's now that we got him back too. It's that's awesome to have him back for another year. And um, he's uh, he's pretty quiet. Like. He's not, I wouldn't say he's quiet, but he kind of walks around the room and you can kind of get around, don't really notice him. And then he, bang, he says something hilarious and you're dying laughing in the room for, for 
15, 15 minutes, but um, <laughs> no, Monty's another one that we mentioned to you on the day, so those guys are so, pretty, pretty awesome. Out of the way. So the, um, this city, living in this city, what's it like for you when you go out? Because I know how it can be. A lot of people recognize who you are and they, uh, people, I mean, they come up to you all the time. Was that like an adjustment for you to make? Because it, when you play hockey, it's to me, it's the only game in town. They have the Alouettes, they have the soccer, but boy, when you play hockey here, just everybody knows who you are. You can't go anywhere. How is that with you? Um, I, I don't get noticed too much, honestly. Like I could go out and um, go to the go to the mall, and I can just kind of get my way around. You know, I can ask for a couple pictures here and there. And um, when I hang around with Susie in the summer a little bit, it's a little bit of a different story. I kind of see what it's actually like to to be one of the big guys in, in town. But um, no, it's good. And obviously, whenever you meet fans, it's it's pretty cool. And um, still kind of crazy to think that people want my picture, want my photograph, whatever. So um, yeah. definitely, uh, definitely a cool feeling when people come up and ask for that for the picture and stuff. Yeah. But I can get around town pretty good without being noticed. Um, so um, Nux, that Nux, won't last long. Yeah, Nux, you have, <laughs> Nux has 24-hour security when he walks. Around. Don't touch yeah, his him, hair him, himself. <laughs> yeah, 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 himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's um, good. <laughs> so, you know, playing here the Bell Center, what was that like for you when you you play your first game the NHL in the Bell Center and the crowd? like that intense because every player we talk to that comes through it, whether they play for the Habs or they play for another team in the league, they, they, they ask them, what's the best place to play? The Bell Center. The Bell Center always comes up. How is that playing there for you on a nightly basis? Yeah, it's unbelievable. I'm so lucky to, to play in such an unbelievable rink and get such a crazy fan base. And um, I mean, I, it's probably probably not often. I think we, we had the best – attendance in the league this year we were up there it's probably not like often that you see one of the bottom teams in the league have the best attendance and um, just yeah. shows how passionate passionate the fans are here and how much they love love the Habs and um, that first game was was crazy I mean coming out um, to that song and um, all the fans are, are going crazy and um, it's so special and something that never going to get sick of and I'm always going to love doing and um, it's an unbelievable place to play for sure it's so special and seeing all the all the retired jerseys up there and um, so much history and um, no it's it's awesome to, to get to play in that that building it's uh, definitely definitely pretty special so now we talked a little bit about the coach but for you and you've had a few coaches in your young career but what makes Marty you know, because a lot of, it, like I said, we've had a lot of guys on here, and they said that when he first came out and gave his first speech to the team, they were, it's it's like nothing they've ever heard before from a coach. What makes him so good at what he does? Yeah, I mean, I think his his hockey mind is just, it's honestly something like I've never, ever seen or heard before, and um, he thinks the game's so differently, and um, I mean, it's just lucky to, to even get to have him as a coach and get to hear his feel of, of how he can for you. And, um, I mean, for him too, it's a lot of respect and the guys respect him. He's like he thousand points and in that era too, as an undersized guy, it's tough to, to make it. Um, and for him to, to dominate like he did is, is crazy. So I think just his hockey mind is, is on another level and the guys respect him and, and listen to him and want to learn from him. And, um, so yeah, he's just, um, he's unbelievable. And I'm, I'm lucky to, to get to have him as a coach and get to learn from him. And, um, again, like I said, I don't think I would have had the success without him, um, being our coach. I think he definitely was a, a big factor to, to the year I had and the year a lot of the young guys had. He was, he was unreal for a lot of the young guys. So, uh, yeah, no, he's, he's great for sure. Does he ever like participate like in the shootouts and practice and just does shit? Yeah, that you guys are, you know yeah. I mean? Well, I, I'm sure. I'm sure you guys have seen that clip there that he's got. And, um, just I'm guessing that was our that was our video coach. That was a dad. He was <laughs> he was a dad and he just totally undressed him. Did the little backwards backwards move and um, so yeah, he could. Like, I think he could still play if he wanted to. Like if he put his mind to it, I think he could still play and, and be uh, be a producer. But no, he's. Uh, 
yeah, it's funny to see him go in and shoot out and, and <laughs> hop in and practice. And um, yeah, it's it's pretty cool to have him on our bench for sure. So at the draft, uh, and you can play both sides of the rink. Um, uh, what? Who do you prefer playing with back on D? What type of player, and and who do you prefer playing with uh, when you're out there on the ice? Um, you know, I honestly I have no preference. Like I could I could play with a uh, uh, more stay at home guy, and um, I mean I I wouldn't say offense is my my number one thing, but um, I could hop in on the rush and hop in the, in the offensive zone and uh, do some stuff. But I could also play with an offensive guy and, and kind of stay back a little bit more and I have no problem doing that too I like to play defense and uh, be kind of a stay at home guy at times too so um, honestly I have no preference and um, I got to play with Savard and Edmondson a lot this year who are more a little bit uh, defensive guys and stay at home guys which I think is um, a little bit I could be a little bit more offensive and kind of jump up in the rush a little bit more kind of stuff so but it was it was awesome playing with those two guys I mean Savvy's uh He's an unbelievable guy, unbelievable player. Big play, Dave, and um, I mean he uh, he's, un- he's unreal back there. So, and, um, and Eddie too. I mean he's uh, he's awesome too. He's uh, hard hard player, hard to play against. Loves giving those cross checks, and um, no, it's uh, it's awesome. It was awesome getting to play with those two guys and then learn from them all year. Yeah, how how important is that? Like a guy like Joel Edmonton, like you know that leadership he provides for you, young guys, and. What are some of the things you pick up from him? Um, some of the things he teaches you guys as a teammate. Yeah, I think, um, I mean, it, like, obviously, like I just said, watching him play, he plays hard and he never never gives up out there. And I think that's something I learned from him too is, um, especially when you get out there against some of the, the top players, he, he definitely can tell when he's out there against like the top line. And, um, he, just, he gives him a hard time out there. And I think that's something that I, I learned and something that I kind of, was taught from junior two is when you're out there against top guys, like you're out there for a reason and it shouldn't be easy for them. So, um, so yeah, that's something that I definitely learned from Eddie is he's, he's a hard nosed guy and, um, from Winnipeg. So, um, you gotta be pretty tough that's if you're from pad. there. Yeah. yeah you so, yeah, you do. So he, uh, yeah, it's awesome to get to learn from him this year. And, um, obviously that leadership he brings in the room and he's awesome for that. Um, so it was great to get to, to learn from him this year for sure. So that's something you're going to have to certainly keep an eye on because at some point here, you're going to be that guy. You're going to get that, <clears throat> I think, you're going to get those assignments. You're going to be playing against those top lines. Uh, and I'm sure you've played against a few already in your young career. And I know it helped me in my career. We were a checking line. We were against all the top lines, Carbono, myself, and Bob Ganey. How... How cool is that to to have that moniker, if you will, to be able to go out there and play against those top lines? And who were some of the toughest guys you had to play against early in your career? Yeah, um, I mean, yeah, like you said, it's it's you want to play against those guys. I mean, that's why you play. You want to you want to challenge yourself and be out against those those big names. And um, but yeah, I think um, some of those. Some of the tougher guys, I mean, obviously, we can be able to play against Ken quite a bit um, when we played in Edmonton there and um, played Tampa. And I think Braden Point was one of the guys that I uh, had a tough time with. I mean, he's, he's a smaller guy, but his stick is unbelievable. And he, he a couple of times I thought I had him beat. He's behind me and he just sweeped the puck under from, from my stick and it's gone. So um, just little stuff like that, the, the, those skills that some of those guys have with their stick that I – I know just playing playing in the NHL is the sticks. Those guys' sticks are unbelievable and something you gotta definitely get used to and learn from. So um but yeah, obviously McDavid, Braden Point, those guys are the two guys that that were definitely tougher to, to play against for sure. So yeah, Tim, that, that is a good that's a good point though, that, like this the little details of stick. Like Pavelski, yeah, little, for example. Yeah, Pavelski's exactly, not the best yeah. skater, but he just gets in the oh. areas he's a yeah. sneaky. I got to pump him up. He's a buddy of mine. <laughs> yeah. But he's yeah. a sneaky player. <laughs> yeah. The, yeah. Uh, Pavelski. Um, so, yeah, playing, it, that's great. But how about the rookie dinner? Were you yeah. happy to have a couple guys around um, yeah. to be able to share in the cost of that? And where'd you have it and how'd it go? Uh, we had it in Chicago. Um, oh, yeah. 
called I think we had it called Maple and Ash restaurant. It was yeah. that was pretty good. That was like a my first like national league dinner, which was which was good. And um I mean we had a lot of rookies, but I think the older guys um definitely um spent a little bit more money since they knew we had more more younger guys and um but it was good. I mean, everyone's got to do it. Um, it was a really fun night. I think it was kind of a, a night dedicated to the young guys, which is kind of cool. And um, um, all the guys are saying all 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 year it's the best weekend of the year, and um, you're gonna remember it for the rest of your life. Which I'm I'm gonna. It was it was a lot of fun. And um, what was uh, the final we, tap? Uh, I think it was I think it was maybe thirty five hundred or thirty five thousand. Sorry. Um, wow. I think it was wow. it was about six thousand a guy. Yeah, that's what so, was. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so yeah, it was it was it was good though. Like it was it was a lot of fun. Um, got a lot of good food and a lot of good wine. So it was I'm fun. from Chicago. Where did you go somewhere after that? Uh yeah, you don't remember. Tell by you. that point, I don't remember. That point, <laughs> yeah. No, I, I don't remember. Did you, I even tell the, you. did you have the day off the next day? We because we didn't. Uh, when I played in Winnipeg, and we our practice was fucking hilarious. No, we yeah, we. On box and shit. Well, no, we because we what we did is we had um, we got to Chicago I think two days early, and then we played Chicago at noon, so then we uh, had the rookie dinner and stuff after that. Um, so then we we stayed there the. the day after the game and then we or sorry we ate and then um after the game and stuff and then we left the next day so we had the day off the next day which was oh, nice. nice it was a travel day so that was nice everyone was kind of hurting but it was, it was good so <clears throat> you're at the draft um your future brother-in-law gonna get drafted um coming back here to montreal when you come back you're coming back here after the draft then what what are you most looking forward to this upcoming season with this team? Yeah, I mean, I think um, just getting everyone back on the ice. I think um, so many injuries last year. Um, we had such a different team from the start of the year to the end of the year. And um, I think just seeing everyone back, like everyone's going to be so excited. I know I'm excited to, to get back on the ice with the guys and um, get the, 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 whatever you say, the core group, I guess, back on the ice and, um, the excitement back in the Bell Center, and um, I think we we're gonna have a good team. I think I think we're gonna prove some people wrong, and um, and we got a good young group, excited group that that wanna that wanna play, wanna wanna win, and um, I think uh, a lot of the young guys learned last year too, and it was good for us to have that year. And um, so yeah, I think I'm just excited to get back on the ice with the guys, and, um, back with the group. I think it's just the biggest thing for sure. And, um, back in the Bell Center is going to be special too. Um, I miss that for sure. That was that was probably one of the biggest things I missed from being injured was just playing in that building. And um, yeah, so that's probably some of the things I'm excited so, for most. Yeah. So this team is yeah they're rebuilding, and um, at some point, I guess that Monica will not be tagged on this team. They're, you're going to be, but. I, I guess what a lot of the fans would like to know here, do you think this team this year has a legit shot to get into the playoff? Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, like I said, we're we're young and hungry. Like we we want to we want to be there for the get playoff hockey back in Montreal, and um, I think we we can do that. I think um, we've got so many good pieces, so many young pieces, and um, added some pieces last year, obviously, and. Uh, it was just tough again, like so many injuries that kind of held us back, I think, and we were, we were doing pretty well before that. Um, so, again, I think we, I think we can make a push for it for sure. Um, we've got uh, a lot of a lot of pieces, and uh, I think we got we got a legit shot for sure. I was just thinking if you were just like, no, like twenty twenty six, we'll make playoffs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wrong, wrong answer. Yeah. Uh, wrong answer. Yeah. Listen, Caden, uh, uh, where are you going tonight? Um, Out in the town? No, I, we might. What's the I think, big place uh, there? What's the big place there? To, to, uh, well, yeah, when we were, yeah, we went to Tootsie's when we were here. Um, well, we had our mock trip here, too, so that was fun to How to was that? that? Yeah, it was good. How, uh, yeah? It was good. Well, and I, I got hurt, like, uh, the game before we came to Nashville, we had two days in Nashville to look them on. So 
I got to enjoy it a little bit with my mom, which was fun since I was hurt. And, um, but yeah, we went to Tootsie's. And we spent a lot of time at Jason on Dean's Bar, which was fun too. That was, uh, that was a good spot. So uh, maybe head back there tonight. So we'll see. But it's definitely a lot busier than it was in January. I hope people everywhere on the streets in the summertime and um, a lot of lineups. But um, yeah, we'll try, try and get out to Broadway tonight for sure. It'll be fun. Jeez. <laughs> you know, you say you had that mums line. I think back to when we, we played. I guess we weren't that creative to think about that. But I re- remember my dad was out in L.A. when we were there. And he uh, went out with the guys in the team. And we had dinner. And he had the time of his life. Like, you had a dad's trip, too, this year, the past no, year, or just the moms? Had, just the moms, and I, I, I'm i guessing the dad's trip either this year or next year, so. Yeah, they alternate yeah. it, but that's yeah. going to be so cool. How how yeah. excited is your mom, like, when they get on that plane for the first time, you know, and see how you guys live life, you know? Yeah, no, well, she, she did a mom's trip in Buffalo with my brother, um, so she kind of got to experience that whole lifestyle before, but. Um, for her to do it again, I mean, she's pretty lucky to get to, to do it again. So, um, no, yeah, she, she just, there, every time she's pretty starstruck and, uh, not starstruck, but just, um, kind of surprised with how, how we get treated and get treated so well in this league. And, um, so she, uh, she definitely loves it and getting to kind of see what I do on a day to day. Um, why maybe I'm not texting her and a little bit busy and, uh, <laughs> So no, but yeah, it's uh, it's awesome that they incorporate the parents because you know no one, no one, none of us would be here without them. So uh, and the team's gonna that. be starstruck when your dad, the pro basketball player, comes <laughs> up. <laughs> gets on the court, <laughs> posting them up, <laughs> talking about his career. He's talking about his career. Oh, awesome. <laughs> oh yeah, relentless, Tim. Yeah. Uh, listen, I want to uh, listen. Have a good time down there. I want to wish you all the luck in the world uh, this season. Get back, get healthy, back on the ice, and uh, keep grinding those minutes out and keep improving. And hopefully, one day you get in those uh, those playoffs and maybe yeah. can bring that Stanley yeah. Cup back to Montreal. It'd be yeah, awesome. Absolutely, that's that's the plan. That's the goal for sure. Thanks a lot, guys, for having me. Yeah, enjoy yeah. Nashville, man. Thanks yeah, for coming on. Enough. And maybe well. when you get back too, uh, if you don't have a golf partner, you need yeah. a fourth yeah. over at St. Yeah. Raph. Yeah. I'm, Nox, you know you how to cook chicken sure. and rice too. You can cook I know chicken, how to cook chicken, chicken and rice. rice. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hey, everyone. Thanks for listening to the Raw Knuckles podcast. Don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe.